started in about two minutes. Um, we're still waiting for, for some people to join, um, but we will we'll get started here shortly. Okay, everyone. So good morning. It is about 10 o'clock for us on the West Coast. Um, so we are going to go ahead and get started with our webinar. Hopefully a few more folks will jump on. Um, my name is Sarah Owens, and uh, I am the, uh, my company is called Hub International. And today we're going to talk about the insurance services that we provide for the IGDA. So everything um, for the, the developers, for you guys, for individuals. And then a little bit about Hub and our company uh, and what we offer as a whole um, in totality for, for our insurers. So thank you again for joining us. As I mentioned, we're going to talk today about who is Hub, what our capabilities are, the solutions and the program that we've put together for you, the special um, bells and whistles that you're eligible for as IGDA members, and then how to access and apply for these insurance programs. So as I mentioned, my name is Sarah Owens. I am our video game practice leader at Hub International. Um, I've been doing this for about eight years, working with publishers and developers to help them ensure everything uh, from their copyright, E&O, uh, the actual games, helping them ensure the health uh, and well-being of their employees uh, through all different types of, of insurance products. Uh, I work closely with the American Bar Association and actually I uh, wrote a chapter in our in a book um, called The Business of Video Games. So we're on our second edition that will be coming out. Um, I really enjoy working with developers and publishers and again helping to build custom solutions that will fit the needs of everyone from the small startup studios to, to the big guys. So who is Hub International? Hub is the company that I work for. We are not an insurance company. We're insurance brokers. And what that means is we help businesses and individuals buy their insurance from an insurance company. Uh, we help businesses put together the right programs and packages and manage their risk. So we're a fairly large company. We have 300 locations across North America. Um, we're one of the top 10 global brokers uh, in the world. We have a million clients, 7,500 employees. Um, we have very high client retention. We, we don't tend to lose a lot of clients, which is a, a really good thing, and we attribute that to the risk management work that we do um, and with all of our employees and our, our great scope uh, and ability to help businesses really go through everything from start to finish when they have an insurance question, placing the insurance, um, hopefully not, but if there's a loss, we have plans in place to help with all of that. Um, so what types of products do we offer at Hub? So we do everything from the commercial insurance, and we'll talk about that today. That's the business insurance. Um, we do a lot of work with personal lines. So think of that as your home, your auto, renter's insurance. Um, wholesale, it, that, that really is, fits into the bucket of commercial insurance. Um, employee benefits, so helping ensure people's health and wellness. And then um, one thing that we bucket into the commercial lines, but that's really the entertainment piece. So uh, at Hub, especially in Los Angeles, we do a ton of work in the entertainment field. 
Um, everything from ensuring movies, television shows, video games falls into this, obviously. Um, we do a lot of Broadway um, musicals and plays. So we have a large scope and really the ability to cover any type of insurance need and build a plan uh, specifically for those needs that, that our clients may have. So our hub entertainment unit, as I mentioned, is headquartered in Los Angeles. Um, but we have the ability to write across all of the um, states as well as Canada. And I know that that's important, especially for um, the folks on this call, because you know it's not um, something that a, a, a video game right isn't going to just have the, a small scope. It's going to have a worldwide reach. Um, and wherever your studio is, we do have the ability to write coverage for you. So let's talk about our capabilities. So when, when we're getting into really what is offered through the IGDA for your insurance needs, we're going to talk about two different buckets. So we have the health insurance, the medical insurance um, bucket, as well as the business insurance. So these are two separate um, types of insurance that are offered. And within those big buckets, there's lots of different policies and plans and programs that you can put together. But for the purpose of our call, let's really break this out and let's say we have medical, health, wellness insurance, right, and then the business side of the insurance that will really encompass everything else, the actual game, copyright, trademark uh, that you're creating. So for your um, medical benefits, there's two different types of benefits that can be offered. One is the employer-sponsored, so that would be if you have a, a studio you have um, an employer-sponsored group plan that you might want to offer medical insurance, dental, vision, uh, disability, life. These are all products that we can help you place depending on what, needs, what your specific needs are at this time for your studio. Um, we can look at doing key person buy-sell. So if you have partners and you need to do a buy-sell agreement, um, if you're looking for long-term care insurance, if you're looking for business travel insurance, those are all, all pieces that we can put together um, to really create, uh, they're all puzzle pieces that we can put together to really help create a custom solution for your studio. For your business, now on the business side of it, um, we can help you with everything from the general liability, property, workers' compensation, auto, um, earthquakes, those are really the, the basics. Um, but we take it a step further and we work with the errors and omissions. So that's where the copyright, trademark, the actual gameplay uh, code that you're writing, that's the, the program or what we really call the special sauce of what we created uh, for GameGuard, which is our program through the IGDA, to help insure developers. Um, we can help you with directors and officers insurance, so that's actually insuring the directors or officers of the company if you form a studio. Um, employment practices liability, so that's going to be um, something that when you have employees working for you, you may have, um, you may need employment practices uh, liability insurance to help cover claims like harassment, um, and something that, that an employee may bring. Um, kidnap ransom, data breach and privacy, uh, crime coverage, that's really the cyber. So again, we will help create a custom plan for you specifically uh, once we know, you know the scope of the project that you're working on, what your studio looks like. There's a lot of questions that we'll have to go through to figure out which one of these um, or which of these uh, insurance products are the right fit for you. So insurance is really just one piece of what we do at Hub and what we do for the IGDA to help you manage uh, your business and your, your um, risk management. So you think of it, insurance is something that we all buy, right? Um, health insurance or our personal renter's insurance or our auto insurance. So we pay for this insurance and we all pay a premium, but it's something that we hope we never have to use, right? It's a lot better if we can not have a claim, just go about our daily lives, go about running our businesses, creating our games, um, and not have to deal with all of the things that, that come with having a claim. 
but claims happen. And if they do, um, we have the ability to help with 24-7 claim services. We'll actually help with loss prevention. So, so what does that mean? We can't eliminate all losses from happening, right? It's impossible to wave a magic wand and say you're never going to have an insurance claim. But we can set up the right protocols in place to help you not have a claim to the best of our ability. So one example might be um, making sure that you have an attorney look at your contracts before you sign with a publisher. Um, although we're not going to pay for that attorney, right? we can help align you with the right people who can help you um, look at those contracts. When it comes to the insurance piece of it, we will absolutely act as a consultant. There's no charge for this. And we're going to review the contracts that you have in front of you to make sure the insurance products that you're purchasing actually meet those requirements. Um, we can help with all types of training for your employees if they need safety training, employee handbooks, um, anything like that from an ergonomics standpoint, we can help facilitate um, getting you set up properly. So again, we minimize the amount of claims and control uh, what we can control so we prevent claims where possible. You'll see something in there called experience modification management. Um, this really has to do with um, your workers' compensation mod number. And again, these are services that are provided to you at no cost. Um, it might not be something that you need to focus on when you're a super small company, but as you start to grow 10, 11, you know, 50 employees, um, that's really going to be an important feature that's available to you. And it's something that, again, we help with on a consulting basis for no additional cost for something like that, um, you know, just as a way to help you manage your, manage your risk and prevent claims where we can. So insurance for the IGDA. As members, you have the ability to go to the IGDA website and uh, have some special access to insurance products and programs that we've put together. Individual medical is something that we get a lot of questions about. Um, so that would be medical insurance for individuals, so not for a business, somebody who wants to go out on their own and purchase individual medical insurance. So healthcare reform, right? We all know um, healthcare reform is now fully in effect. There are no special plans for IGDA members for individual medical insurance. So I just want to be very clear up front. There are a ton of rules and regulations that everybody throughout the country has to follow. Um, there's nothing special. There's no special pricing on individual medical for IGDA members. Um, there's no special pricing for anybody anywhere in the United States anymore. The rates are the rates. Um, what we have created is a way for you to um, obtain quotes. Uh, and it's a streamlined process. You'll see when we go through the next few slides where you just go to the IGDA website and look at your specific state. Um, but you'll be able to enroll during the new open enrollment period, which is coming up very shortly, or if you have a qualifying event. So a qualifying event means a marriage, a birth, adoption, or if you've lost your job um, and did not take COBRA, you have the ability to enroll off the open enrollment cycle. Okay? Again, these open enrollment cycles are set the same way for everybody um, in our country now. This is, this is a part of health care reform. Group medical insurance. So different then if you are just an individual applying for medical insurance, this would be for studios with two or more full-time employees. That means you're eligible for an employer-sponsored health plan. Okay? Now, two or, two or more full-time eligible employees means W-2 employees, and you have to show um, payroll. So this is, there's again, a lot of rules that have now come with health care reform. Um, there's no special pricing for any groups 2 to 100 anymore. Um, that's considered small group. The rates are all state filed, whether you work with us as the IGDA broker or a broker next door to you. There's nothing special rate-wise or plan-wise 
uh, for these small group medical plans. Again, we've created a solution to help you, um, you know, with the cost management, with the ease of enrollment, uh, with compliance, wellness, and notifications. So this is, this is a solution that we're able to provide, but the plans are the plans. Um, they are what they are for everyone. At Hub, we have something called Hub HR. This is available if you enroll on the group medical, so two or more for your studio. There's no additional fees for this, um, but you have access to human resources help and support. Um, they can help you look at employment contracts. They can help you with severance and release uh, forms. Um, they can help you with really a cookie cutter handbook. We always recommend having your attorney look at this, your specific handbook. But they can help get you started in the right direction with some HR support uh, when you're a smaller studio, you know, maybe just starting. Or they complement larger studios very well when you do have an HR director and somebody that just might have a few questions or want to reach out. Um, and ask about you know what's going on with these new laws, regulations, anything employment related. So that's one of the bells and whistles that we can offer for those group plans. Again, we talked about the plans are the plans, but this is just something in addition that we are able to offer. So let's talk about the business insurance. This is where we really have the ability um, to offer something special and unique to the IGDA members and to the, um, the video game development community as a whole. So GameGuard is what we call our video game program. It's specifically designed for business insurance to help video game publishers and developers. So this is going to, this program, we actually um, worked to tailor this program um, specifically for game developers. When, when we started, when I started in this business, there really wasn't a good program or product out there to cover video game developers. We kept finding um, products, insurance products, that were designed for software developers and didn't really take into account the entertainment side of what video games really are. So the products were limited in what was covered and very, very expensive. So we thought we, there has to be a better solution. Um, so we worked to create this program that we're calling GameGuard, which is actually going to ensure both the liability, so the general liability, um, and that's something that you may need just to get a lease, right? Your lease may require general liability when you're leasing a space. Um, but we take it a step further, and the general liability is going to cover things like um, if somebody saw something in one of your games uh, and then tried to go out and recreate that act and got injured, right? So, you know, as silly as it sounds, somebody sees someone jumping off a building, they say, oh, I can go jump off of something, and they fall, break their foot. Um, they sue the developer, they sue the publisher, everybody gets named, you know, uh, then we have a situation. That's where insurance would kick in, could possibly kick in. That's the liability side of it. Um, the other piece to the Game Guard program is the errors and omissions side. And this is really what we saw a big gap in the market um, for the products. And we saw that a lot of insurance products weren't covering copyright and trademark the correct way. So in this program, we've created copyright coverage, trademark coverage, trade dress coverage. Um, patent is not included, so it's not included in this. That's a separate policy. However, um, the, the offerings of just the copyright trademark trade dress are so robust through the Game Guard coverage that it's going to cover 99% of, of what you're looking for um, to fulfill your contract needs, to fulfill really you know, your studio um, requirements as developers. So, Everybody, a lot of people will think they need patent insurance. You typically don't. We can talk about that, um, you know, on an individual basis and analyze if that really is something you need. Patent insurance is really, really expensive and um, very difficult to actually trigger a claim. So when we say for the errors and omissions piece of the game guard that we cover copyright, trademark, trade dress, that um, 
that means we're actually covering the things that you create for your game. We cover the game code. We cover um, malicious intent is included, which is really important. That's something that a lot of other insurance policies do not cover. And what do we mean by that? Let's say you're developing a game. Um, you have a developer working for you, and they write in some malicious code, or they write in code that um, makes something happen in the game that shouldn't be happening. It gets through all your checks and balances that you have in place. Now, all of a sudden, you have a game out there, and it's causing an issue. That code was put in there on purpose by someone who worked for you, or by accident. It doesn't really matter. Um, there is coverage for that in this policy. That's something that you won't see in a lot of other programs. So you're going to have coverage for, up to the limits that you choose to buy, coverage for legal fees. So when you have to pay a lawyer to help defend you if a suit is brought against you or a claim is brought against you, you're going to have um, coverage up to the limit that you choose to purchase for settlement amounts. So you've got both the legal fees and the settlement amounts. And one thing that's really important to keep in mind you don't have to, the claims don't even have to be legitimate. If somebody comes up to you and sues you and says, hey, starts a claim and says, hey, I'm going to sue you because um, that character you created was really my idea. And I told you about that five years ago, and, you know, it's, you stole my idea. Well, maybe you've never even met that person in your life, and maybe you know that this claim totally has no legs, it's bogus. You're still going to need to pay to defend that claim um, that's been brought against you. So that's where the legal fees can kick in, start to add up, and that's where this policy will trigger, and you would have the ability to work with an attorney who understands the games industry and can help you dispute um, what's been brought against you. Maybe the claim does have legs. Maybe there is an issue. Maybe there really is a copyright issue. A lot of these get settled, but they're still very expensive to settle. Um, so this policy will help provide monetary assistance so you can, again, keep working, keep your studio going while the claim's being dealt with. So something um, that's unique that you're automatically eligible for uh, as IGDA members, if you choose to purchase uh, the GameGuard program, you know, we talked earlier about insurance is something that we all pay for and hope that we never have to use. Um, through the IGDA, you're eligible for a no claims bonus. What that means is you're going to purchase the insurance and everybody's going to pay a premium. So you pay a premium for the business insurance for GameGuard. If you go claims free for one year, um, the insurance company is actually going to return 10% of the insurance premium to you in the form of what they call a no claims bonus. If you have a claim, obviously you're not eligible for that bonus. Um, but you're probably not worried about that because the insurance companies probably paid out, you know, far in excess of the 10% the if you have a claim uh, of your premium. So again, that is something unique. We have the ability, uh, unlike health insurance, to offer some extras uh, for the business insurance. And the no claims bonus is something that, you know, again, we're happy to offer through the IGDA. The coverage is worldwide. Again, this is very important. Um, your games obviously can be played anywhere, so we want to make sure the coverage extends anywhere in the world. Regardless of where your studio is based, if you're US based, Canadian based, it doesn't matter. Um, if someone brings suit against you, there is worldwide coverage uh, through this program. And then coverage limits. So the amount of, ins of insurance that you um, are able to purchase, we really uh, can get whatever limits are needed, and we can help tailor those limits to meet your contractual requirements. So the important thing is you're not going to be, you're not stuck into buying limits that are too high. It's not like you can't get limits um, to meet your contract requirements. We can really tailor this program to help you with any contractual requirements that you have. Um, that also goes for anything weird or unique that you may um, need to cover. You know, I can't guarantee that we can add that into the contract, but nine times out of ten, we're able to amend the contracts to add things in. If there's something that, you know, is, is unique about your game um, that we would like to have coverage for, we can actually, we have the ability to amend the E&O contract um, 
to, to create the right program for you. So how do you access this insurance? There's several ways to apply. Um, you're, gonna, you're always going to need to fill out an application. I always get phone calls um, from developers and they'll say, I need some insurance. How much would it cost me to get a million dollars of insurance? That's actually, when the question's framed that way, it's really impossible for me to answer because every um, developer is underwritten on an individual basis. So they're really going to look at your studio, your project, who the principals are working on the game. Um, the underwriters are going to take all of that into account before they can price out and create a program for you. So we need you to complete two applications, um, and you can find those at hubentertainment.com slash IGDA, so those are all online. So you'll create um, the Game Guard application, and then um, you will, you'll see that uh, one application, and then actually included on that link is a supplemental application with a few yes or no questions about your studio. So you'll complete all of that, um, and then we will work with the underwriters to provide you quotes. Um, so you can make the best decision about which products are right for, for your business. Um, we'll go through everything and we'll help you along the way, but we do need that application completed before we're able to start. Uh, so again, we're going to look at everything. We talked about the general liability. We talked about the errors and omissions. Um, excuse me, workers' compensation. We didn't really touch on that. Just know if you have employees or contract employees, you're likely required to have workers' compensation. Um, if you're in the U.S., if you're in California, you're 100% required, um, hands down. But we can, again, talk about that. There's really, that's a state-mandated policy, so there's nothing, um, nothing really exciting to talk about with that one or unique, but just know it's something that you're required to have. Um, umbrella. That's really just when we talked about the ability to offer you whatever limits you need. If you need really high limits, it's called an umbrella, and we help put that over the program that we've created. Um, and then if you have auto, if you have people driving, um, you'll, you'll see that you have the ability to get coverage for that. And then employment practices liability as well. That's in case you, know, you have a harassment issue. Again, all of those products we can offer once we have the application completed. Group medical, so if you have those two or more full-time employees that you can actually show W-2 payroll for or K-1 earnings if, if you have two owners, um, you're going to fill out the group medical preliminary application. Based on what state you're in, we're going to reach out, learn a little bit more about exactly what you're looking for, um, and then we're going to help you choose the right health insurance plan on a group basis. But again, you access everything by just going to this website um, and then looking at the quick links clicking on them, and you'll see the app um, right there in front of you. So individual medical insurance. Again, individual medical insurance is all, is all federally mandated. Um, each state has their own different mandates and different rules, but because of health care reform, we have one open enrollment date for 2017, and that starts on November 1st, 2016. You need to enroll by December 15th, 2016, and your coverage starts on January 1st, 2017. This is the time where everybody has the ability in America to enroll, change your plan, um, do whatever you need to do. Once uh, December 15th rolls around, open enrollment is closed for the year on an individual health insurance basis, and the only way to enroll is if you have one of those qualifying events, so a birth, a death, um, you leave your job where you had group medical insurance um, and you did not take COBRA, you can enroll and you have the ability to roll through, enroll throughout the year for the uh, individual medical. As I mentioned, the plans are the plans, they are what they are. You're going to um, go to this website, hubinternational.com slash quote it, and it's going to be a self-service. You can walk through, see the plans that are uh, that you are eligible for. It's going to help you understand if you're eligible for a subsidy, um, and you'll find all of the information for your particular state on that website. 
Uh, one thing to know, again, I know I said this, but just to, to reiterate, unlike business insurance, unlike the group medical insurance where we do have the ability to do that any time throughout the year, uh, this really, these deadlines are really strict. So if you don't enroll by the 15th, you do face a penalty. Um, you can talk to your, your accountant about how that would be, but there is a monetary penalty um, because every American is now required to carry health insurance. So these are the, the deadlines that everyone has to meet. Okay. So how does the process work? You go through, you complete the application, and then what? Um, for individual insurance, that individual medical, quotes are provided within seven days of the full application being received. You would then select your plan and complete the enrollment online. So you, again, just expect a five to seven day turnaround. For the business insurance, once you complete that application, we're going to review, we're going to set a time to review um, the specific risks and look at the contracts that you may have from a publisher um, before we submit to the underwriter. We're going to take that uh, application, we're going to look at your contracts, we're going to look at the website that you have, anything that you can share with us to help us paint a picture for the underwriter about what you're looking for. Um, we're going to package all that information together. We're going to mutually decide on a need by date. So if you need this, you know, we're going to figure that out together, what the need by date is, and then we're going to work with underwriting. We can make things happen very quickly, but ideally um, we're looking for about a 10-day turnaround um, once we have the application. So just remember, you're going to do the application, we're going to have a discussion, look at everything you have, and then underwriting may come back with some additional questions. So the more complex the project is, um, or the studio or the game, the more questions they may have, uh, the more information we can provide up, up front, the more streamlined the process will be and the faster uh, you'll receive your quote. So group health insurance, this, the, the turnaround time on this is really going to vary depending on the size and scope of your employer right now, your studio, and if you currently have a renewal date. So we like to work 90 days out. Um, for the mid-sized to larger studios because that really gives us the ability to go to market, hold a proper open enrollment, which means explain the benefits to your employees um, and help them make the right choices. But again, this one, these, these can happen all throughout the year. You're going to submit a census. We're going to be able to, a census of all of your employees, you know, who they are, where they live, um, and then we're going to create the right plans or, or look for the right plans and put a program together that's going to best suit all of your employees. So um, again, we like to work on these 90 days out. We can do it um, quicker than that if needed. I would say at a minimum we really do need 30 days. Uh, if you're a startup developer, we've got more flexibility. As soon as you can meet the requirements of the actual insurance company by showing payroll, showing that you're actually in business, um, you know, it, it's going to vary, but you might be looking at a 30 to 60 day enrollment period. Okay. Um, throughout the year, we're going to be providing you ongoing service and support to help you with any questions you may have. Um, one of the nice things about the business side of the insurance is the fact that the insurance company really understands small developers. They do a great job pricing them. They do a great job covering any size developer, and they know that there is a lot of fluctuation um, or there can be a lot of fluctuation from the time you complete an application to the time of renewal a year later in your business. So you could be working on a game that, you know, you, you project that your revenues, let's say, are going to be really small. The game takes off and it's growing like crazy. You're having a lot of sales. You really have the ability to go in midterm and make changes. Um, they're willing to work with, and like I said, they really understand developers and the growth cycle. Uh, of how a game comes out, so you know it's it's a that's a great problem to have, right? When you project low and then have a lot of sales and the game's just a huge hit. Um, but throughout the year, we're constantly going to be in communication and in contact to make sure we understand the life cycle of your studio, of your game, where things are, and if we need to make changes, we're certainly not going to wait um, a year to do that. So. Those are really the three types of insurance, the, the buckets, the two buckets that we talked about that we offer through the IGDA. 
the medical insurance, and within that medical insurance, we've got the group and the individual. Um, then we've got all the products, life insurance, medical insurance, health, um, uh, vision insurance, health, dental, all of those are available. And then on the business side, our other bucket, we have our tailored program um, covering copyright, trademark, trade dress, general liability, and then we'll help you with the other business needs that you're going to face covering property, so the actual computers, um, covering employment practice issues, and covering work covering workers' compensation issues, and then those risk management strategies to help you prevent claims from happening. So we do have a few minutes left. Um, I think you'll see on the side of your screen, if anybody has any questions, um, please feel free to type those in, and we, we can uh, spend a few minutes answering, answering those questions if anyone does have them. Um, Again, please feel free to reach out at any time if you have specific questions for your business that you may not want to, to ask on this call. We're happy to help you um, be a resource. We're happy to review any uh, insurance policies or contracts that you may currently have in place to see if they really um, are covering you as you would expect. Um, and just know that, that we're here for you through HUB, through the IGDA, uh, to be a resource and help protect your studio and help you grow. Sarah, we have one. We have one question. Right. Um, do you? What happens if it says if it says it's not available for your state? Um, I followed up and asked which. It said coverage unavailable. We're sorry, individual health insurance is not available through HUB in your state. Can we find out what state that is? New York. So you're going to, New York, um, there are some specific states that will require you to go directly to the state, and that is one of them. So you're going to have to go through the state of New York. New York doesn't allow um, the, a broker on their exchange. They have created their own exchange. So again, if you're in New York, um, you'll see it'll tell you Hub's not able to help you. Really, no broker is able to help you, so you're going to want to go through the state of New York to access individual medical coverage. Okay. Um, another question we have from Robert. We use contractors. Do you require our contractors to carry their own, their own liability insurance? Most of our contractors are individuals who probably cannot afford to get their own insurance. So. When we say liability insurance, when you have contractors, very technically, independent contractors um, should be covered under workers' compensation. Now, I, it is so rare that we ever run into actually seeing the, the individual contractors carrying their own workers' compensation insurance. Um, that's why we always recommend that who, you as the employer, in fact, that's the technical term, um, carry a workers' compensation policy to cover those 1099 or contract employees working for you. Um, if you have, and that's on the work comp side. Now for liability, um, if you have a general liability and errors and omissions policy, um, in most cases that's going to cover the work that that independent contractor is doing for you so long as you have a contract or an agreement in place in writing with that independent contractor um, that states that you own whatever um, work they're developing. So that work belongs to you, not to the contractor. Sorry, I had myself muted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why aren't you answering me? <laughs> um, the follow-up question was, are contractors covered by the standard game guard policy? So again, for workers' compensation, you're going to have to list those out. Um, but typically, for the errors and omissions um, and copyright, that piece for the actual work the contractor is developing, the short answer is yes. So long as you have an, a separate agreement in place with those contractors that you, as the, um, as the business or the studio, owns the work that they're creating. 
Okay. How different are policies outside? How different are the policies outside of North America? Um, well, the policies, it really is going to depend on who the insurance company is. I can tell you that the policies can be tailored to be what you need them to be. The places where we see a big challenge um, with, with actually writing the insurance is when we have a developer who's solely based in Asia. And that's just because insurance in general um, as a whole is really is looked at very differently um, in Asia. So unless they have a US-based um, or a US office or location, it can be really, really difficult to get those policies in place. If you have a claim, though, if you're a, a company um, in Europe, if you're a company in Canada, in the US, wherever you are, if there's a claim that happens in um, Asia, you're going to have coverage. But that's really the only time I've seen a lot of differences in the policies um, you know, for the overseas countries uh, you know, when we're when we're talking about Asia because they just, again, look at insurance and copyright and trademark completely differently than we do. Um, but we have one policy that's really going to encompass all of the needs that you have. You're not going to have a different policy, per se, outside North America or for that reason. You might have a different policy just because of the scope of your studio and we need to cover, you have some unique needs that we need to cover. We can just manuscript and make a policy to fit your needs. Uh, they followed up with, um, they are referring to cyber law of different countries. I think that's going to get very specific. So, you know, there's a lot of different different laws. Um, a cyber policy for, like, hacking and for um, going into someone's system, that's going to be, uh, again, a separate policy. Um, I'm happy to talk a little bit more offline on this one just because I think that that's a really hard question to answer in totality or and just make generalizations about. Okay. Um, and we'll do this as our last question. Can you discuss what work for hire means and how that defines who owns the work of a contractor? Sure. So work for hire is really that 1099 contract employee um, who might be hired to work for several different studios. Um, and then, sorry, repeat the last part of the question. How do we define? How do you define who owns the work of the contractor? Okay, so how do you define who owns the work of the contractor? Really, really important. You want to have an attorney create a, a simple contract between you and that independent contractor that states who owns that work. So we've seen it done a lot of different ways. Um, I'm always going to recommend that whoever is creating the game, if you're going to hire an artist, you want to, as the owner or the creator of the game, as the owner of the studio, um, as the developer, you want to own the work because the last thing you want is to create a, have someone work for, for you, create artwork, and then say, wait a minute, you can't use that in the game, I owned it, or come back and, and sue you for you know, more royalties or something that has to do with the game down the line because you did not ahead of time draw out specifically, um, lay out specifically who owns the work. So you're going to want to work with an attorney. Again, it's a simple paragraph that really just states any work created while working for you is owned by, you know, you as the, the developer um, and that, that this artist or, you know, musician or whoever is composing something for you, understands that this is just a transaction, you're paying them X amount of money to, to create that artwork, to create that code, and then they're done. They don't have any ownership rights to the game. So simple, simple answer is it's defined um, just through a, a, an easy contract. Thanks, Sarah. I actually have one more, if that's OK. OK, sure. Um, to clarify, if I am the only employee at my studio, the only insurance available to me is through the health is through healthcare.gov, right? Correct. If you are an individual, yes, and there's only one person at your studio, the only only insurance available is through healthcare.gov. Okay, I think that's that is it.
All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for your time. I really appreciate it. Please reach out. Um, you can find our contact information on the IGDA, IGDA website, um, and we look forward to helping you any way we can. Have a good day.